about like the, the stem cell production and stem cell release um especially when it com- when it comes to i can understand how it can help um heal people that are affected by radi- radiation and chemotherapy when it comes to cancer could it be used as a replacement for chemotherapy or radiation to any extent i know it's obviously scientifically not there yet but do you think that's a possibility uh <clears throat> well there's a couple things to like you know To answer that question, um, when people do undergo chemo and radiation, sometimes their blood counts drop, like a certain, um, their hematocrit drops and uh, white blood cells drop. So, and stem cells can drop too. And hyperbaric oxygen could be a way to augment that. Uh, If we had, the Israelis showed that with hyperbaric oxygen, that it can actually increase HIF-1 alpha, which is counterintuitive because HIF-1 alpha is hypoxia-inducible factor alpha. When we undergo hyperbaric oxygen and then we come out of the chamber, our body senses relative hypoxia just because of the relative changes, and that can stimulate HIF-1 alpha and then maybe actually increase our red blood cell count. So some athletes may do hyperbaric oxygen to actually increase their red blood cell count. So that's uh, a little bit peripheral to the conversation. But what does that do? Uh, to increase your red blood cell count, what does that mean? Yeah, oh, that means like you're you have more red blood cells, so you have greater oxygen ca- carrying capacity. And okay. so okay. athletes, uh, especially like cyclists and you know uh, elite level cyclists, uh, one of the go to drugs in that world is erythropoietin or EPO, and then EPO will increase your red blood cell count. That increases something called your hematocrit. And ultimately, that's giving your body uh, a great an advantage because you can carry more oxygen. Okay. So hyperbaric oxygen may be able to do that, and it's nice that you're augmenting your own physiology to increase the production of, of those cells. But your question with cancer in that, so we know radiation and chemotherapy work by uh, work in killing cancer cells by augmenting reactive oxygen species or oxygen free radicals. Right. We know about free radicals. Mm -hmm. So with radiation, if you apply radiation to a tumor, the radiation nicks the DNA and that's one way to kill it. But most of the radiation damage is actually a result of increasing oxygen free radicals. Right. So uh, that's how radiation primarily works chemotherapeutic agents that kill cancer cells kill cancer cells by increasing oxidative stress in the cancer cells but it does it both of these modalities are chemotherapy and radiation are very potent carcinogenic agents so we are using a potent carcinogenic modality to kill cancer cells right and it's doing it primarily through augmenting something called oxidative stress uh, you know our oxygen free radicals So hyperbaric oxygen is a way to naturally, uh, by increasing the partial pressure of oxygen in our body uh, and reversing tumor hypoxia, as a tumor grows, it outstrips its ability to supply oxygen because the blood vessels can't keep up to Mm -hmm. the expanding biomass of the tumor. So the core of the tumor often becomes hypoxic. And when you put someone inside a hyperbaric chamber, that does a number of things. It reverses the tissue hypoxia inside the tumor. So the low oxygen in the tumor is reversed with high oxygen, hyperoxia. And when you hyperoxygenate a tumor tissue, that causes a massive burst in oxygen free radicals for a number of reasons. The oxygen can get in the tumor because the oxygen is not being carried by red blood cells, which get caught in the little blood vessels. The oxygen is actually dissolved into the plasma independent of hemoglobin. So this is very important because the pressure component of hyperbaric oxygen, which means the increase in barometric pressure, literally pushes the oxygen into the plasma. And then it could get into the little nooks and crannies, if you will, of the right. of the tumor. And the tumor goes from, you know, a tissue PO2 of like two or three millimeters of mercury to like 150 to like 2000 millimeters of mercury, which is very, very high. And when all that oxygen is inside the tumor, because the tumor is like a bunch of screwed up cells that are also degrading, you have a lot of heme, like uh, heme proteins are being degraded, and you have a lot of free iron. And 
oxygen in the presence of free iron in that environment drives something called the Fenton reaction. And then you have a massive burst of oxygen free radicals and, and it's driving different pathways that kick on cell death within the tumor. Now this can happen in normal healthy tissue, but it's greatly augmented in cancer tissue because uh, the cancer tissue's relative state is low oxygen. And when you reverse the tumor hypoxia and hyperoxygenate it, you get a correspondingly higher burst of oxygen free radicals. It's because the relative change is going to be higher, right? And then the, the oxygen free radicals uh, feed into a pathway uh, because of the free iron that contribute to more reactive intermediates like the hydroxyl radical. And these things can help to essentially kill the cancer from the inside out. Uh, an important thing to note is that hyperbaric oxygen may further enhance the cancer killing effects of, um, of radiation and chemotherapy when they're done together. So, so yeah, I believe that a hyperbaric oxygen should be used for many different tumor types. And I think it has a lot of uh, potential. I mean, in our lab, we coupled it with the ketogenic diet and saw that we could extend survival in mouse models of metastatic cancer. And that motivated us and many others uh, to so study when it, this. So when it hyperoxygenates these tumors and you explained how the oxygen free radicals ex ex explode, what does that physically do to the tumor itself? It just, the tumor will shrink, will it die? Like what, what happens to the actual tumor or the, or the cancer tissue? Yeah, so um, if we're talking about a solid tumor and then you apply you know, hyperbaric oxygen, for example, uh, two to three atmospheres of oxygen for 60 minutes, three times a week, mm -hmm. something like that. So that's a pretty, pretty big dose. What is happening to the tumor is that it's, you know, the tumor, like I mentioned, especially a growing tumor mass becomes hypoxic. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in the chamber and experiencing a high level of oxygen, and if you were to put an electrode inside the tumor and measure the oxygen, the level of oxygen would go up like 2000 times. So when that oxygen gets super high in the tumor, it's stimulating the production of these free radicals, which then kick on a number of different pathways that can essentially rupture the, t the mitochondria, start spitting out oxygen that creates oxidative stress. And then you oxidize membrane lipids, you oxidize proteins, you oxidize nucleic acids. This creates a lot of stress to the cell. Mm -hmm. And then cells literally start like like blowing up rupturing so when yeah so when i was uh some of the early studies that i did was actually developing hyperbaric atomic force microscopy and then later i made it a laser scanning confocal microscopy uh unit to this microscope and it's inside the chamber and we were looking at different cell types and one of the cell types were uh, glioblastoma cell types which is a type of brain cancer mm -hmm. and uh, this particular cell type was u87 uh, glioblastoma multiforme so it's not super important but it was derived from a patient i think a 44 year old patient or whatever so i had the cell line preserved we plated the cells we put it inside the hyperbaric chamber and we we're looking at them and then we hit the cells with hyperbaric oxygen and I noticed that the mitochondria started pumping out tons of superoxide. I had a dye to measure that. And then I would see the mitochondria disappear. They were blowing up underneath what? the microscope. And uh, as we were monitoring the fluorescent signal, which is the, the, the increase in the brightness of the cells corresponded to the production of oxygen free radicals. As the cells became brighter, I saw the mitochondria disappearing. That means that they were blowing up, they were rupturing. And then I started to see cells dying at a far faster rate than any other cell that I looked at, including smooth muscle cells, fibroblasts, human, uh, rat neurons, and uh, different, different cell types. So I thought this was very interesting. And that was done maybe in 2007 and eight. 